Hi everyone, welcome to the famous NRG Recording Studios in North Hollywood. Woo! I'm Steven Slate from Slate Digital and I am very excited to be here with you guys today because what we're about to show you uh, has been two years, two long years in the making. But that number isn't really accurate either because in reality, this product has been in my head since I was a teenager. You know, back then I was working at a lot of commercial professional recording studios all throughout the Northeast. Now those studios were filled with the greatest classic analog recording gear. You know, I'm talking about classic large format consoles and mic lockers with 47s and 251s and you know, gorgeous tape machines and all these wonderful tools that helped make great music. And after days of working with all this amazing gear, I'd retire to my own little home studio, which at the time had this little small live mixer and a few hundred dollars worth of microphones, you know, basic DAW with a few plugins, and I would dream. I would dream that one day I would have a studio with all those amazing, cool studio toys. You know, the big mic locker, the big console, the tape decks, the racks of outboard. But of course, they were stratospherically out of my budget. You know, I, I did the best with what I could afford at the time. But, you know, I had that dream that one day I would have all that amazing, cool stuff to make music with. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys have had the same dream. We started Slate Digital as an attempt to remove that traditionally huge financial entry fee to great sounding mixes and recordings. And we've moved farther towards that goal than, than I'd ever thought was possible at the time. You know, we've been responsible for the first authentic non-linear modeling technology in the industry, known as the Virtual Console Collection. Yeah. And then, of course, recently, we integrated hardware and software to create a microphone modeling system called the Virtual Microphone System. And of course, over the years, we've developed a large suite of analog modeled EQs, compressors, tape machines, recording consoles, mastering gear, and it's in use every day in top studios around the world. And it's helping people make music that we all know and love. Uh, and we just found out recently that our dealers told us that the virtual microphone system is actually the fastest selling large diaphragm microphone in modern history. But with today's new product announcement, we're gonna finish the entire concept because it's time to reinvent the recording studio. <laughs> Today, we're not just introducing two new hardware products. We're introducing the concept of the Slate Virtual Recording Studio. What we will do today is break down the final barrier so that anyone can have the studio of their dreams to make incredible music and it's not gonna require millions of dollars. So let's first review the concept of the classic recording workflow. You know, in the old days, consoles and tape machines had no real discernible latency. You could work in any way that you liked without fear of some processing delay screwing up your recording workflow and setup. You know, it was a microphone, tape machine, console, some outboard gear, and you dialed in your tones as you went, and it really wasn't until computers that, you know, you started thinking about the term latency. Uh, and attempts in our computer-based world to combat this have come from two camps. You have one that uses proprietary DSP interfaces to offload the heavy lifting from the host computer CPU. We'll refer to those as DSP-based solutions. And then one that uses only the processing power available from the host computer, uh, which we'll refer to as native-based solutions. In the past, DSP-based solutions were the only way that professionals could approach the low latency performance of traditional studios. You know, DSP solutions have been solid. But now in 2017, there are two major issues with DSP-based solutions. Now, first and foremost is they cost more money. But let's say money is not an issue. There's actually a much bigger problem. In terms of processing power, a new native system will absolutely smoke a DSP system in terms of the processing. Okay, the DSP chips and some of the current solutions are severely outdated and severely underpowered for what is demanded from modern audio engineers. But of course, on the other hand, the issue with native interfaces has always been that it's not a truly low latency cross-platform solution. Okay, they've gotten better and there are some low latency solutions, but they're still not great. 
So at Slate Digital, our goal was to figure out a modern solution to recreate the classic recording studio process. I'm talking about the microphone, the recorder, the console, and all the world-class EQs, compressors, and gear that you process your audio with, without any worry about latency. A solution that would give you the entire dream studio without worrying about spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course, we call this new solution the virtual recording studio. And at the center of this new ecosystem is a brand new state-of-the-art recording interface that we're calling the VRS8. Now, on the surface, it may appear to be just another cross-platform, eight-channel, native interface. But by the end of today, you will see that it is one component of an entire virtual recording studio package. Uh, the next part of the system is partially known. It's the virtual microphone system. And today, we'll announce the second new product in that line. And once, of course, the audio is recorded with these microphones, you know, the next step is the Slate Digital Virtual Analog Tools consisting of an entire universe of the industry's top analog model gear. But it is the unity of these three items that create the virtual recording studio. And we're gonna show you that today. So first, let's discuss the VRS8 recording interface. Slate Digital is certainly a bit late to the interface game. You know, if you look at the current competitive landscape, there are lots of options to choose from, uh, from a number of reputable companies. Now, in all of these units, you have multiple inputs, outputs, you got clocking, some are DSP, some are native, some you can link. Uh, so we knew that if we were gonna build our own interface, we were gonna have to come out swinging. Therefore, we had to make it better than anything else on the market. And during the entire development phase, we had two words that we lived by, and those two words were no compromise. So to start, one of the most crucial parts of an interface is its front end. So we loaded up the VRS8 with eight VMS1 ultra linear preamps, which are the flattest, most linear sounding preamps available. And that's not just marketing speak, okay? That's measurements and you can see them right here from the uh, audio precision analyzer. Uh, so as many of you know, the VMS preamps give you a blank canvas so you can apply Slate Digital's microphone preamp modeling, meaning that the VRS8 preamps can take on the precise tone of tons of virtual famous preamps. So right now we, we already offer two of the most famous, the FG73 British Discrete preamp, the FG76 Vintage 2 preamp, but we have lots more in store. And of course now we have some great incentive to make a lot more. But of course, since we have VMS preamps on the interface, we can also incorporate our microphone modeling. So there's another thing I want to point out about the preamps in the VRS8. Now each and every preamp has its own high quality metal knob. So you can easily grab two and start setting your levels without having to use menus or logic controllers that may seem simple, but it just makes it a joy to use because I can't stand having to use little, you know, logic controller buttons and have one knob for every single preamp. It's just, you know, tedious and cumbersome. Uh, but anyway, after the preamp comes the A to D converter. And for this crucial component, we needed to ensure the absolute flattest, most nonlinear solution. And where many companies choose to cost cut by using some of the more affordable designs, we went right to the top. The VRS8 uses brand new AKM5578 converters, which are a brand new chip, the most transparent converter chips available, and they spec higher than any other pro audio interface converter. In combination with our no compromise circuit design and clever engineering, the VRS8 achieves an incredible 124 dB dynamic range on all eight Ooh. inputs. It's, it's worth noting that there are converters used every day for mastering that don't spec as highly as these chips. But it's not just a converter that is responsible for the sound of an interface. You know, the analog front end and back end are equally as important. And once again, no compromise. 
we use the OPA 1612, one of the highest quality op amps available that has over double the price of what we found in competitor units for all inputs and outputs. We use German WEMA capacitors on all the inputs. Again, this is not the cheapest way to do it, but it's the way to do it if you're doing it with no compromise. Now you'll see that we have two headphone outputs on the VRS-8, which can make use of the independent A and B monitor sources. Again, many interfaces cheap out when it comes to the headphone output, and they put in low-costing, low-quality amplifiers. But we went the opposite route. In fact, our engineering team created a discrete amplifier exclusively for the headphones. And therefore, if you're tracking or mixing with the headphones, you're going to get the most absolute pristine quality possible. And then there are the direct quarter inch inputs for guitar and bass. We use a high quality JFET bass preamp design which will ensure the best quality with any kind of guitar or bass pickup. And of course, no converter can function without a great clock. So we added a satellite grade XTC clocking system to keep this converter absolutely transparent and jitter and distortion free. <laughs> However, simply having amazing audio specs wasn't going to be enough if we were truly going to create a virtual recording studio that worked with our virtual microphone systems and virtual analog software. Because again, the issue with many native solutions has always been latency. Well, that's out the window with the VRS-8 because we created a new technology that we are calling LLN or Low Latency Native. LLN features a custom-built hardwired chipset. There's no firmware or software in the converter path to get in the way or slow things down. So the driver to audio is direct. And for Mac, the digital connection is Thunderbolt. We're going to discuss the PC connection a bit later. But anyway, that means we are able to achieve the lowest latency in the market for a native system with a native round trip that goes as low as 0.7 milliseconds. So now that we have the nerve center of our virtual studio, let's break down the components of a traditional recording studio. And let's just see how it lays out. So you start off with microphones. I mean, you already know about the ML1. It's the large diaphragm mic in the virtual microphone system. But today we're announcing the newest addition to the VMS line. It's called the ML2. And here it is. Now, some of you... Some of you were probably thinking, is that a mic in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Well, it, it actually just was a mic in my pocket, so let's just get that out of the way. The ML2 is a perfect complement to its larger sibling, sporting the same ultra-flat response and zero distortion and noise, but in a much smaller enclosure. It captures an incredibly precise image of the source it's miking, and that means that just like the ML1 large diaphragm virtual microphone system, once the ML2 captures the source, with the VMS preamps on the VRS-8 interface, you can then model some of the most classic instrument microphones in studio history. <laughs> this little microphone can morph into tons of studio classics, including dynamics like the 57 and 421, but even cardioid versions of classic ribbon mics like the S121. And of course, it can model other small diaphragm condensers like the famous 222 tube condenser. But we didn't even stop there because the ML2 provides such a flat response that we were also able to add some very convincing large diaphragm models like the famous 414 and even the 47 FET, which is one of the most incredible sounding instrument mics, especially on kick and bass. But then I remembered a conversation with John McBride of Blackbird Studios where he told me he liked using vintage tube U67s on toms. And I thought he was crazy. Because if one of those mics gets hit, that's an expensive accident. But I realized we could model the tone very closely of a stock 67 on the ML2. Maybe not as spot on as the ML1, but pretty damn close. So that's exactly what we did. So now 
you'll be able to get the sound of a vintage tube large diaphragm 67 for your toms, drums, and whatever source you want on this little mic. Using ML2s, you can mic the entire recording session. Put them on drums, overheads, snare, guitar cabinets, bass cabinets, horns, strings, everything. And then from the comfort of your studio chair, choose whatever mic you want for that song. And then if you want to change your mics for another song, you can swap out all of your microphones with new virtual models without touching a single microphone. And again, using the VRS8 interface with low latency native technology, you can do all of this with almost no latency. It's unprecedented. And we're gonna do that in a few minutes. But moving on in our ecosystem layout, in the studio, mics go into the microphone preamps. And again, we have eight ultra linear preamps on the VRS8, and we can apply all of the nonlinear characteristics of our microphones and preamps. And of course, with the virtual mix rack and our Slate digital tools, you can add EQ and compression and other processors. Now, earlier we discussed DSP solutions versus native solutions. And I said that in terms of processing power, native could really slaughter DSP. And some of you had skeptical looks in your faces. Well, let's just put it to the test. So here we have a Universal Audio Apollo 8P Quad DSP interface. Now, this is a fantastic interface made by one of the greatest companies in the audio business, a brand that I truly respect and admire. But when we load one of their most popular preamp EQs, the Neve 1073, on their most powerful interface, just eight instances maxes out the entire DSP capacity. Just eight. Now, using a 2016 Mac Pro, and you can see the specs on the screen, let's see how many of the Slate FG73 preamps and FGN EQs we can load, and let's see how it taxes the system. So let's just stop it at 40 and let's, let's take a look at the CPU. And as you can see, we're only at 5%. And, and some of you, especially watching out there, you're probably saying, well, isn't there some kind of major sound discrepancy between these two plugins? So we took the liberty of matching the frequency and range values and we posted some blind audio examples at our webpage. So you can see that link, it's probably somewhere blinking on the screen or in the description. Uh, but the spoiler alert is that they sound almost identical. So there's not really any contest. I mean, DSP solutions absolutely had their place, but the VRS8 combined with a modern computer makes many of these arguments harder to make. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the scenario, when we're mixing and overdubbing, Slate Digital makes everything that you need to finish a pro record. There are tape machines, there are virtual consoles, there are console equalizers, there's reverbs, there's delays, there's bus compressors, there's mastering devices. In our Everything Bundle, we even have guitar amps. Uh, you know, it's an entire virtual recording studio laid out and available for you at a click of a button. So let's put that into action, shall we? So we actually have a live band here with us in the studio. And this is where we can begin to show you the kind of power and flexibility that we're talking about. Because we've got the entire band mic'd up with the ML2s going through the ultra linear mic preamps of the VRS8. So let's start with the drums. We have ML2s on the kick, snare, and tom, and overheads. Now it's time to point out another new proprietary feature of the ML2. You know, normally if you put a small diaphragm condenser on a loud source like a snare drum, we found that even with the top of the line small diaphragm condensers, and even when you use the pad switches, these small mics are actually saturating. You know, they can't handle the loud SPL of a close mic drum. You know, this was actually quite revealing. You know, it doesn't mean they sound bad, but clearly if we had a saturated signal on our ML2s, then we could not use it for modeling purposes. So our engineers created a mod circuit on every single ML2. Okay, it's called a dynamic switch. Now this little switch repolarizes the capsule as well as adding attenuation. 
So you can put this mic right on the close mic of a loud snare or a kick drum or a tom, just like as you would a dynamic mic, and you'll get a completely clean, unsaturated signal. Okay, so for our first two, we're gonna go old school, okay? So let's pick out our virtual mics. Now in the kick, let's use a vintage FET 47 model. Now, now I'm already seeing some of the skeptics out there. They're, they're saying, can this little mic really emulate a classic vintage FET 47? So before we even go on, we have the real FET 47 that we modeled for the ML2, and we've got it next to the ML2 outside this kick drum, and we're gonna do an AB right here. First, just take a listen to the ML2 without any processing. Okay, and now let's take a listen to the real FET 47. So that's, that's a pretty huge difference. But now let's put the S47 model onto the ML2 and we'll do that same comparison. All right, so now we've struck the 47. We put the ML2 a bit closer into the kick hole, and uh, we're gonna keep that FET 47 emulation on. So for this first tune, again, we're gonna go old school. So I wanna choose some old school mics. On snare, let's go with an S57 vintage, because by the way, we have two 57 models. The vintage is from the early 80s, the modern is a brand new out of box 57, and yes, they sound different. Let's take a listen first to the ML2 with no processing on the snare. And now we're gonna put the Vintage 57 model on and we'll take a listen again. <laughs> on the Tom, we're gonna to put a emulation of a Tube 67. So let's first again take a listen to the Dry ML2 on the Tom. And now with the Tube 67 model. <laughs> Continuing on with our old school sound, we're going to put some ribbon S121s on the overheads. Our guitar cabinet, we're going to use, again, the FET 47. And for the bass, we're gonna be plugged directly into the VRS-8 JFET DI, and we're gonna use the FG76 tube preamp. And then of course, we have Natalie on the vocals, and we're gonna use the FG47 on our large diaphragm ML1 microphone. You guys ready to hear it? Yeah. All right, take it away, guys. You don't know me You don't know me You can't look inside You can't move my eyes You don't know me So you don't get to be The pain in my heart That tears me apart
So that was amazing. And you can also really hear the high quality detail and the analog vibe of this recording system. But here is the fun part. Without changing a single physical microphone, we're gonna get an entirely new sound. So we're gonna have them play that same song again, but we're gonna go for a more aggressive kind of rock tone. So we're gonna start swapping out all of the virtual microphones. Okay, so for the snare, let's put on the S451. It's a small diaphragm condenser, but then we're gonna copy that same track. And now we're gonna add another mic model. We're gonna use the S57 Modern. So we have two perfectly phase aligned microphones using one single ML2. On the kick, we're gonna use the S12. And then we're gonna also use a little FGS EQ to carve out a little bit of the low mid. For the Tom, we're gonna use the S421 with, again, a little bit of EQ. For the overheads, we have the S222s, which sound incredible. It's a tube small diaphragm condenser microphone. On guitar cab, we're gonna use the SE20. For the bass, we're gonna, again, DI it into the VRS8 uh, instrument input with the FG76. And now for vocals, Natalie's back on the ML1. This time we're gonna use the FGM7, which is a really good punchy rock vocal microphone. So we have an entirely new set of mics and a whole new vibe. And again, we didn't touch any physical microphone. So let's hear how this sounds now. Guys, take it away. You don't know me. Again, guys, that was amazing. So, you know, what we just did was pretty remarkable. You know, that was the same song, and yet the vibe and the character has completely changed. And yet we didn't change anything in the recording other than the virtual microphones being used. You know, and this is unprecedented. This is the first time this has ever been done. Uh, so let's do this. Let's do an A-B of those two songs. You know, first with all the vintage old school mics and the old school sound, and then with the more modern, aggressive rock sound. Let's take a listen. So today we're using eight channels uh, on one VRS-8, uh, but good news for the big pro studios, you can link a whole bunch of these VRS-8 units to get a lot of channels at once, and that's using Thunderbolt. Now, I, I, again, here's some whispers. What about PC? You know, I mentioned PC earlier. Well, actually, we have a lot of love for PC people, and therefore we've customized a solution for PC using the same VRS-8 hardware. Uh, first, let's talk about what other companies are doing for, for PC interface solutions. And it comes down to three letters, USB. But when it comes to low latency and low CPU multi-channel audio, there is a big problem with USB. And that problem is that it's a terrible solution. You know, USB compromises latency and CPU performance for the convenience of, of using a single wire. It's like, oh great, so we have a single wire, but uh, we have horrible latency and we have really crappy CPU performance. 
And we thought about it for a moment. Now, most pro engineers who will use multi-channel interfaces in their studios are likely using some nice big custom PC towers. And those towers have plenty of PCIe slots in them. And guess what has the same performance as Thunderbolt? It's PCIe. So we added an HDMI connection on the VRS8, which then hooks up to a small custom PCIe card that goes into your PC tower, ensuring you have the exact same latency specs as Mac with the same low CPU. So PC guys, you have the same performance. You have a little PCI card that comes in the box, and Mac users can use the included Thunderbolt I.O. Uh, OK, so now you've experienced the power of the virtual recording studio. So there's only one more thing to talk about, price. So first, let's go over what comes in the package. So first, there's the VRS8 Thunderbolt and PCIe interface with eight VMS ultralinear preamps including eight AKM 5788 124 dB dynamic range converters. But I'll remind you that, again, this is not just an interface. It's a virtual recording studio. So that's why when you get the VRS8, it comes with an entire year of the Slate Digital Everything Bundle. So that includes an annual license for every single Slate Digital plugin, top third-party plugins, and every new plugin that we release for the next year. Again, we're talking about analog modeled EQs, compressors, virtual guitar amps, mastering software, and much more. And also, it comes with a permanent license of the virtual preamp collection to give the VMS pre's some beautiful character forever. So here we go. So the price of the VRS8 interface with an entire year of the Slate Digital Everything Bundle is just $19.99. It's $1,000 less than the Apollo 18. And of course, after a year, you can continue the Slate Digital Everything Bundle for $14.99 monthly, or you could just buy the plugins individually that you like most. It's really up to you. But the point is that when you buy VRS8, you don't have to worry about spending tons of money on plugins for the next year. Now let's talk about microphone packages. So the ML2 modeling mic a la carte by itself with the classic instruments mic software that gives you almost 20 mic models is 150 bucks. But when you get it with the VRS8, you can get a five pack of ML2s and the mic software for only 500 bucks more, $24.99. But there's more, there's more. What about the ML1? What about for those vocals and for overheads and all these amazing things you're gonna want all these large diaphragm tube models for? Now, the ML1 normally sells for a thousand bucks by itself along with a single preamp. But if you add that to the VRS8 package, it's half price, it's only a $500 addition. You can get five of the ML2s, one of the ML1 and the VRS8, and an entire year of the software for $29.99. Guys, thank you so much for coming and welcome to the new recording studio. Yeah.